is the sound of the Baby Audio Atoms, which is a new physical modelling based AU slash plug in instrument. Uh, it's a very unusual thing in terms of physical modelling. We're used to sort of strikes and bows and taps and scrapes. This very specifically is based upon something called a mass spring network, a mass spring network uh, developed by a chap called Sylvan Williamson. Uh, there are other instruments that use, uh, are exploring this, uh, such as the Anukari, but this is the first one to market. And it does have a very unusual sound. And with a lot of physical instruments there's often sort of different ways to excite. The way that this works is it creates sort of, there are masses connected by springs and you bow. The actual excitement is from a bow and you can affect the vigorousness of the bowing or the, the force, the amplitude, all of that kind of stuff. And it's a really unusual thing. I mean, looking at the interface, it's quite an unusual looking thing. I mean, this is the first uh, preset. It's actually... Um, MPE as well, you'll notice there are MPE uh, here, and I'm using the Osmos, which is why some of those notes would have been a bit wonky. It's not the tuning of the atoms, it's my playing. But it's got a very unusual and quite an organic sound. In this particular boat, Bode Steel, it has a sort of, like a sort of vintage orchestral feel, but the things that are making it sound that way are completely <laughs> random. They're springs and masses, not the sort of thing that you normally make sounds out of. So as such, it's quite a niche product, but it's also got some very unique characteristics. Let's flip through a, more pre a few more presets, just so I can give you an idea of where it goes. There's quite a lot of ambient ones here. Uh, this is another one, Dirty Brahm, it's called. see the MPE in the interface is modulating the chaos, the force, the filter. Very sort of filmic, isn't it? I'll try a couple of more in this notion. Lots of harmonics here. Let me turn this up a little bit. It can be quite a dynamic instrument. I'm running this in Reaper at the moment. I'll tell you what it reminds me of a little bit is some of these sort of very specialist sample libraries, which sort of run basses and things into kind of giant distortion stacks in a room, you know, whatever they may be. It's, but it's got a very organic quality to it. This is a mono voice. Right, let's get on to... Um, one thing you will start to notice as I go through these, there is basically a lot of similarity to the sounds. There's a sort of driven, harmonically rich... That's nice, isn't it? I'm just going to turn that up in the room because that sounds... And you can see in the middle here, there's the sort of... This is a representation of the spring network, the number of springs that there are in the network. stuff. Right, let's get to some more red ones that I've marked. As you can see, they're tagged with MPE. Uh, this comes with a couple of libraries. Uh, let's have a look. Quantum Pluck. But you can buy more. For all its bowing in the modelling, this sounds like... Uh, a pluck, doesn't it? And as you can hear, the reverb does actually play quite a big part in the sound design. If I sort of up 
So size is top right and mix. So if I come back, it does actually have quite a nice element to the sound design. Just a reverb, there's no delays or anything. Isn't there? I mean, we're not going to be finding pianos and uh, sort of acoustic emulations in here. This is all sort of quite unusual uh, sounds. So, let me just unveil. And you can see there's a little modulation going on. And there are different ways that you can affect things. Oh, that's nice, isn't it? Uh, so, for instance, uh, we've got the ability to modulate something called chaos. Uh, chaos is the non-linear behaviour. So if you add more chaos, uh, the, the vibration of the springs and the masses becomes more erratic. So we end up with, because essentially they, uh, you know, in its purest form, it's creating sine waves because the springs and, uh, and the masses, the masses are sort of bouncing against the forces of the spring. But adding this non-linearity is the chaotic part of it. So if I... You can hear it gets a bit bonkers. But I can modulate these things with, uh, I've got sine, I've got saw, I've got drift. Drift is just general chaos. And the amount of modulation, it's a very simple in, in, uh, and you know, fairly elegant interface. Probably the only thing that's going to be familiar to you is this filter. The filter gives us the ability to modulate the filter. This is a sine motion. Clicking this actually introduces a bit more of a resonant peak. It's not, you know, it's just a filter with a sort of preset resonant peak. And I have to say, a lot of the patches I seem to have gravitated towards have the XY pad essentially over there. So let's go to no effects. Still nice. So I'm, I'm, this is going to be fairly meandering because, I mean, for me to to, to give you the full sort of um, tour of the features, I am going to have to read up on uh, the, the the mass and spring system, <laughs> which uh, follows your laws of Newtonian physics, essentially. So the mass is excited and the, the forces against the springs. And, and essentially, we have different models here. So if I just go, let's, let's maybe uh, take the motion off. That's the filter open. Let's just sort of, let's drop all of this, this modulation. Got some attack, basic att So these uh, are essentially the algorithms. We've got the standard algorithm. The force is how vigorous the bowing is. Creates a sort of. Oh, let's take this. If we take the drive down, it might give us a more natural. The order. I think this creates additional harmonics. Overtones is essentially where where the uh, bow is placed. Kind of almost like on the length of the spring, so towards the beginning is a higher fundamental, and further up is more. Let's take that. Creates more harmonics. I'm not going to pretend to give you a full explanation of this because you know there are these are very unfamiliar terms, but suffice to say. 
results are quite nice. Actually, well, let's try some smaller reverb. It's got quite a nice, some nice algorithms in there. So these are effectively, this is kind of pretty much, if I bring this. The raw sound. And we can add quite a lot of drive. And then if we were to maybe. That's adding some harmonics. Let's just get into a bit of program. So I'm going to add some. Uh, if I switch MPE mode on, I can then root an amount of modulation. Let's see how I do this. I think I do it like this. So now that's affecting the tonal. Characteristics. Uh, one thing I will say about this, the presets, while are um, enjoyable and there's a lot there, once you kind of get your head around what you're doing, it's very easy to kind of find these other sweet spots. Like, for instance, you know, finding a filter point. There's a certain sort of sense of these are all in the same kind of sonic family. Like I said, we're not necessarily going to find, you know, emulations of pianos and DX7s and stuff. Let's try another pad. These are the different algorithms. So we've got a standard algorithm, then we've got an alternative algorithm. So it quite radically changes the nature of the sound. Then we've got an inharmonic algorithm, which is quite interesting, and then a lo-fi algorithm. And of course, if we go back to standard, we could go to eco mode. And what eco mode does, if you imagine a layer of a, a string of masses and springs together, it uh, it, it stops the um, the masses all working in multiple uh, dimensions. So you ha you sort of simplify the excitement directions by hitting eco mode, and that kind of takes a little bit less. Um, juice on your CPU. I don't really know what this is doing. I don't think it's that heavy. And I'm running this on, like I say, in Reaper. I'm running it directly into the X32 over USB, 128 samples. This is a 15 inch MacBook Pro original, you know, first, first gen. Let's find some more sounds. I mean, I am graduating towards, gravi gravitating towards the sort of stringy sounds. And I make no apologies in in where it takes me. And I think that's the nature of the instrument. Though I think, like I say, there are some... Uh, let's find a few more. Let's see what some of these are like. Aerial Warfare. I guess these are... I will say very little modulation action here it could have and and by the same token there's no way sort of I can't find a way to right click and map MIDI controllers to some of these which I think would probably be sort of helpful but these are all things that could easily be added in a sort of iteration of this I think I think the kind of big push for this was what it came out in February they wanted to do it at NAMM it wasn't quite ready 
the big push for this was to get it out in the world. And I think all the sort of control and uh, UI things can be tweaked quite easily. It's getting the kind of actual engine working that's the, that's the main thing. Let's find, I've got uh, Warm Winter. That's another pad. What's this one? Polish Electro. Uh, this is using these modulators, so we've got saw modulation here. Which can be clocked or free running. Doesn't go into massively high... Uh, Interesting, isn't it? It's got almost those harmonics. Very wet, but very short. I mean, I'd like to have seen something happening on the aftertouch or something happening on the mod so that I could affect something tonally. So it seems like that you know there's not a lot of uh, control aside from the actual playing stuff in some of these patches, but they certainly sound really interesting, don't they? I really like these harmonics. I wonder what happens if we change these algorithms. a robotic elephant pining for its uh, wide open spaces and the herds of <laughs> wildebeest sweeping majestically across the plain. Sorry, that's a bit flippant on me. Interesting though, isn't it? I mean, it's got a... I mean, I've never heard that anywhere else. That's, that's a very unusual singing drill. Starvation. Let's just take a look at that bass. I think what it is, because we've got these uh, sine waves at the heart, which are the, effectively the Newtonian oscillations of the mass and the spring, there's a sort of st very strong fundamental in these, and that's what they have in common uh, with a lot of those presets. So Atoms is available now. Uh, it's an intro price of 59 bucks, which feels like a, quite a reasonable price. I'm not sure that extra 41%, given the sort of early nature of the UI, the preset handling, and various other little bits and pieces, would make it seem like it's worth definitely 59 So if it's something you need for your uh, current project, it's definitely got a sort of sonic fin fingerprint that you're probably not going to find anywhere else. It's quite an interesting sounding instrument, that's for sure. So... Yeah, I'm pretty... I, when I first saw it, I was a little bit kind of like, oh, I don't really understand this. But actually, a bit of tweaking, and you can start to get some more interesting sounds out of it. I mean, just if I go back to this Bode Steel, which is preset one... We just mess around with some of these... I would have liked to have been able to add a, just a little bit more resonance there. 
because I'm sure I could pick out some really interesting harmonics there with just a bit, bit more resonance. But I'm sure that's easy to do. And it's not like it's... It, I guess I'm, it's not like I'm missing something. It's just that the sound I'm finding quite inspiring and I would like to be able to tweak it a little bit more in some areas. I mean, that almost sounds like French horns. And at 59 bucks, it's not exactly going to break the bank. And it might find that it suits a project that you need or it takes you in some creative directions that perhaps you hadn't considered before just because it's, it's very harmonically rich and quite an atmospheric machine. Anyway, that's it for this time. Thanks very much for watching. See you next time.